Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are making this Ulu and this is a Beautiful thing, I've wanted to make one of these for a long time. Now this is a collaboration project between myself and Blackbeard Projects. Uh, the two of us have been trying to get together for a while to do these and his channel is absolutely incredible. You've got to take a look at it. it. does some really amazing things over there. But he's making the steel blade and I'm making the handle and we'll put them all together and see what we get in the end. So let's dive in and take a look at how to make this. I have wanted to do an ulu for a long, long time, and when I suggested this one to Blackbeard Projects, it uh, took off, and so he made this blade and sent it to me all the way across the pond and finally got here, and we are going to make this. So I need to create some scales, and I have a box of little scraps like this of nice stuff. So Paduke, uh, Ebony, and some curly white oak. I love curly white oak. It's absolutely gorgeous, and this particular piece has so much curl in it. So I need to slice off a chunk of this paduke, and I just want a thin red line right up against the steel, just something to pop, a little bit of color. And this was too thick, is about a quarter inch uh, thick, and what I wanted to do is resaw this down so I get two scales that are uh, about a little over a sixteenth inch thick when they're all done. Um, so I think it's what uh, three thirty seconds thick, and so I can draw a line right down the middle and then resaw this down and this really scares a lot of people you know resawing a thin piece like this is oh no um, but if you take your time and you do it well and you don't force the saw that's the problem most people have is they're pushing the saw into the work let the saw do the work and you just let the saw run um, so i'll go at it from an angle on one side and i'll cut down about a half inch or so on my side and then i'll rotate the stock around and then cut down from the other side and then i'll rotate the stock around and cut down from the other side and this way i'm always focusing on the line on my side of the board and i can make sure i get a nice straight cut stop rotate cut some more stop rotate cut some more until you get most of the way through then you have to flip the board in for end so you can cut from the other side because well, one side's being held in the vise <laughs> and then you're through and just like that, you have two thin scales ready to go. Now they're pretty rough from the, the saw curve. You can see I missed a little bit on there, but not bad. Um, I was planning on uh, being able to remove that. And now we have uh, two pieces that are ready to, uh, to glue on. Now we need to work on the curly white oak. And you can see this stuff is, is absolutely beautiful. When the boiled linseed oil hits it, it's just, oh, it's, it's one of my favorite woods, uh, if, you can, if you can't tell. I need to rip this down so that it's a similar size to the red scales that I just had. Uh, you do have to be careful with it. You can see that chunk just broke off there. It is a very fractious wood. And so if you if you look at it funny, it, it cracks off. Um, but uh, if you take your time and work with it, it, it comes out pretty well. Then I want to cut these in half and put one thin stripe down the middle. And I had thought about putting the stripe off center. But then after looking at this, the, the blade is off-center, the, the, the connection coming down. And I thought if I make it off-center, then everything's just going to be off-center. So why not actually center out the handle and make it uh, the same on both sides, even though the blade itself is off-balanced. I thought that might add an interesting little bit of contrast. I don't know, I might be overthinking it, but I kind of like the look of it. So a small piece of ebony, and this was sent to me by a, a viewer a long, long time ago, and I've used a couple little chunks out of it. It just makes a great contrast, especially right up against this uh, white oak. Uh, yeah, Slice it to length so I can get two pieces out of this, one stripe on either side. And ebony is an incredibly difficult wood to work. It is very, very hard. It is It splinters easily. It, uh, it, it It's not an easy wood to work. But it, uh, it can work if you do it well. I'm going to be using a really strong 5-minute um, epoxy. And this is stuff that I've used in the past and I trust it well. And it works very well for this. So we apply it to the ebony and then to the paduke. And then we can glue the pieces down. Especially with having an oily wood like this, using epoxy is, uh, is, is very good. Now, normally I would use something a little slower, but I was a bit set for time. So the 5-minute epoxy will work really well. Then we can pound one scale up against the other, and that way it'll sandwich that ebony nicely. I love all the curls and dust that come off the ebony. It just makes everything beautiful. Now I am going to stabilize these, so I'm going to put them in some cactus juice, and I let them boil for, what, two hours or so. Let the pressure off, and then we can wrap them up in foil and heat them up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a couple videos on stabilizing. Uh, so just type in wood by right how to stabilize wood, and you'll come up with that. The nice thing about the cactus juice is you can 
um, keep reusing it as it doesn't absorb that much into the wood. And then we can cook them at 200 degrees for, I think it was about uh, two and a half hours I had these in there. I normally let them go for a little bit longer, but in this case I was in a bit of a rush. And it worked pretty well as these are fairly small, so they heat up rather quickly. And yes, they are hot. <laughs> so now we have the scales, we need to clean these up so that we can glue them to the steel. And this is one of these points at which there's just a thousand little steps that have to be done. Even though we're just making two little pieces, we're gluing to the steel and that's just about it. Now I have to be very, very careful when planing these that I have to follow the grain direction because if grain's running one direction on one piece, it might be running another direction on the other piece and you end up blowing out the wood if you're not careful at all. And we have to plane down all sides, including the paduke on the back, because I want to smooth this out. And I want to get a nice, clean, smooth surface ready to glue to the ulu. And one of the nice things about planing is it leaves all of the pores open on the wood. This makes it so that it will hold on to the epoxy much better. So right before actually connecting it to the ulu, I will sand the, the wood, but I'll do it with a really coarse like 50 grit sandpaper so it doesn't fill the pores with uh, with sawdust. So now we want to trace out the handle onto these scales and we can just do that by quickly clamping them in place, drawing a line on it, and now we can plane them down to the line. Uh, some people might use a spoke shave here or a file. I just had a plane sitting right there so it was easier for me just to grab the plane and do it out. For the inside curves, I used the coping scaw to come in on the bird's mouth and cut them out from one side to the other. Make sure that it all fits, make sure you're following the line, and make sure you don't cut off too much, otherwise you've just ruined the scale and you've got to start all over. And so I made sure everything was good and going before I cut out the long curve on the bottom side of the handle. Now that we have one shaped out, we can come back in and file it down right onto the line, making sure we get as close as we can. I don't really need to do this because I'm still leaving it proud a 32nd of an inch or so away from the steel so I can come back and clean it out later. Uh, but I do want to keep it as nice as possible because I want one side to match the other side. And now that we have that side right where I want it nice and fitting, we can then transfer the lines onto the other scale. And then I can do the same process over again and bring that one down to the line. And so it's a little bit of filing and a little bit of cutting and a little bit of slicing. And uh, you know how it goes. Once we get them shaped, I'm going to put some carpet tape in between the two. And this way I can then come back and file the two down to the identical shape. Again, I don't really have to do this in that I will be filing them again once they're glued onto the handle. But I find it much easier to do it now when I don't have the steel in the way. Because the steel on that handle is hardened, I don't want the files to hit it if at all possible. The other thing I need to do is right where it connects with the, the handle, I need to remove the material there because I'm not going to be able to cut that 45 on there after I glue it on. So you can see I'm cutting out a small section there where the steel will come out of the handle and down to the blade and we can get ready to actually glue it down. Now he shipped it with a whole bunch of uh, protection on there and so I had to clean all that off, scrape off most of the, uh, the wax and then uh, uh, hit it with some alcohol and cleaned it off really, really nicely. Before gluing, I want to do a little bit of grinding to the surface and make sure that I can scratch it so that the, uh, the epoxy holds onto it nicely. There are probably enough scratches on this one to, to go with it um, and that he didn't, didn't polish it before sending it to me, but I figured I'd just grab some 50 grit sandpaper and scratch it up a little bit more. And here you can see I was talking earlier about the scales. I just have some 50 grit sandpaper just to put some marks onto the wood without clogging up the pores and this will allow the epoxy to fit. Now I don't want epoxy to squeeze out between the scale and the steel and stick to the steel. That makes it very hard to clean off. So what I'm gonna do is put a bit of masking tape on there, put the scale on, and then cut back to the scale. This will allow me to remove that small piece of masking tape, and then when I put the handle on, it will come right down to the tape, and any glue that does squeeze out will squeeze out onto that tape, making it much easier to remove. Then again, we're gonna use the same epoxy to glue it to the handle. Don't put on too much. You don't want to have it squeezing out all over the place. And if you have a good fit between the two, you really don't need much at all. And then I'm using a bunch of squeeze clamps on this. Yes, I could use something better, something more force. But in this case, I really don't need more force. I just need it held in place with enough force. And the squeeze clamps do provide enough force. Before gluing on the other side, we want to make sure we clean off any squeeze out that came through. And I'm doing this while the, the glue is still 
Uh, it was only sitting for about an hour or so, so it's still a little bit muddy. It's not completely hard yet. Uh, but as long as I take my time and I'm careful, I'm going to make sure I don't pop that scale off of the steel. Now we want to pre-drill the holes to make sure that our pins have some place to go through. And then we can repeat the process again and glue the second side of the scale on. Rough up both the steel and the handle, glue those on, and then we're going to let these sit. And I'm going to let them sit for, uh, I think it was a little over 24 hours. I want them to harden up nicely and, and provide a really good bond between the two before I go on to the next step. And so again, we're going to use the squeeze clamps, hold it in place, and voila, it is a glued up handle. <laughs> Okay, uh, from here on out, uh, Luke wasn't able to be here, so the video footage is a little bit more static as it's just on my tripod. Sorry for that, but uh, um, we'll try and get that next time. So now we have holes drilled from one side. We need to then transfer those holes all the way through and on the other side. And this way, the pins will follow through the hole in the steel. I'm starting off by drilling a slightly smaller hole, and then I enlarge the hole to the to the size of the steel of the uh, the brass pins. And uh, uh, Black Bear Projects sent the brass pins along that I could do this with. So now that the holes are drilled, we can drive in the pins. I ended up having a problem with the middle one, and it is slightly larger. It's a quarter inch, whereas the two on the outside are uh, about six millimeters or something like that. They're the ones that he sent with me. Um, so yes, um, they're, they're slightly different. If you look at them, you might notice that the middle one's a little bigger, um, but if you not, then they don't. So it doesn't matter. Don't look at that. <laughs> Next, we can cut off the pins and then use a file to grind them down flush, being very careful to keep the file flat so I don't round over one side or the other. And this is a, this is a very satisfying step when you can clean it off and you see the bright, shiny brass poking through. I'm very, very happy. The next process, which is going to take a lot more time than I expected, is grinding all of the wood down to the steel because I want the steel to poke out. Here I'm using a file card to clean off the file because it does load up with all the epoxy and the rough wood. And so I'm occasionally having to stop and clean off the file so that it cuts again. And we're just going at this and grinding down to the steel. Now I want to be careful that I grind down to the steel, but I don't hit the steel too much because the steel is hardened and that will hurt the files. And I'm at, I am using the files that I don't care quite as much about. Um, so when I do do that final scratch and I hit the steel, then yeah, oh well, it's not too much on the, the files and I'm not worried about them that much. So we're gonna run all the way around, clean it up to the steel. And I really like how this comes out. You start to see the red lines, the steel and the white oak very very happy here you can see how when we clean the tape off the epoxy comes with it really nicely and you get that crisp edge all the way across working on the inside of the ulu was a little bit more difficult than i had expected uh, because you're 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 not having to, you're having to be careful with the blade above it which you don't have on a normal knife on the two ends i'm going to grind them down right flush to the paduke uh, so that it looks like a really nice sharp line there and I'm going to be going one file to another file to another file until I get that really fine, clean file. And this will give me my finished surfaces from that file. It leaves a really beautiful, smooth surface. On the top and bottom of the handle, I'm not going to grind it all the way down to the paduke. I'm going to stop slightly short so that the two bevels and the top are all the same thickness and size. Again, I'm going to start with a massive rasp, take off most of the material, then go down to a fine file, and then to another fine file, until I get down to a really fine file like this, where I can just come back through and detail and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. On the inside of the Ulu, it was a bit more difficult. You had to be careful not to hit the blade on the top, and so it was uh, just kind of fun there. Here you can see I'm using a riffler just to get right up into there. I had to do a little detail work, and none of my files were quite going to work. The last thing on it was smoothing off the top face where the pins are at. And so I was just using the file, went at these a good while, and scraped them all down. Now I need to clean off the blade and polish it down. And I don't have a big buffing wheel, I don't have a big sandpaper, so this takes more time. You've got to do it by hand. And polishing steel with a lot of heavy scratches in it takes a long time. I really liked using these diamond paddles, and uh, they work really well. They're from DMT. I'll try and leave a link to those down below. Uh, but you can go through those coarse, medium, and fine, and they do most all the work. Now, I didn't get this down to an absolute glass polish all the way across. I just got it down to a really nice steel. And then the last thing I did was brought the strop in and polished it off of that. Then we can sharpen it up and give this thing a test. Yes, I do use a strop on my Ulu, too. And it shaves off hair nice, like, just be careful not to slice yourself. This is one of those times where I'm like, ooh, this is happy, this is happy. You can pull off all these tufts of hair. 
Yes. Smoothness. <laughs> oh, oh, boiled linseed oil. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's... um. Mmm, that's happy right there. That is, that's what I'm loving. So, yes, I do love boiled in seal. It works fantastically. It really brings out the color, especially in that curly white oak. I am really, really happy with this. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I like it. So, yeah, there is my Ulu. And definitely go take a look at Blackbeard Projects and see what he has on his site. I, I am in love with this one. And, yeah, happy. There you have it. I am in love with how this thing came out. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, I like doing octagonal handles. They just feel really good in the hand. And if you don't know what an ulu is, it is an Inuit tool used for cleaning the fat off of seals and things like that. Um, it's basically a food preparation tool. And a lot of modern kitchens have gotten into doing them because they make them really easy for chopping things. And this is very good for slicing in across things and uh, as a general defensive weapon. Ha! Ah! Um, <laughs> But, but this was a lot of fun to make, and I am in love with how it came out. I hope you are, too. I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas down below. What should I do differently? Uh, what do I work on better next time? I'd love to hear those. Also, if you'd like to see the artistic video where I just go through this, I'll leave a link to that down below. Now, if you want to see how the blade was actually made and put together, you can go over to Blackbeard Project's channel. I'll leave a link to that down below and up in the cards. So I hope you like it. If you did, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell. All those things really do help out the channel, and thank you for that. That really means a lot to me. So thanks for sticking around, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh wait, you want a dad joke from the dad joke book. Okay, let's look at this. I call my toilet Jim, not the John. And that way I can tell everyone, first thing in the morning, every morning I go to the gym.